Hello there. Server room 17 once again. This is my Battlefield 4 hard difficulty walkthrough. This is mission 4. It's called Singapore. And once again, we're rhyming. <laughs> oh, so easily amused. But, you know, something that I don't understand, aside from the myriad of things I don't understand, is for a game that allows you to change your kit and select weapons and puts quite an emphasis on it, almost like they're rewarding us like it's a new feature, even though I've already mentioned this, but Rainbow Six Vegas had it many years ago, and it had it at a much more customizable rate than this game, which is baffling and bizarre, but we'll not go into that. Why don't they have a, a menu before you start the, the level that allows you to pick your gear? Because if you see what just happened there, I got off a boat at the beginning of this level. The only thing I've trimmed out on this video so far is the driving towards the beach in the monsoon uh, weather, which looks really good visually, but it's boring as fuck, and you don't need help on how to drive in a straight line. Unless you're a female driver, and there's a nice stereotype for you, as soon as I were doing a theme of stereotypes in this guide. So... I get off the boat on the very first instant of any real gameplay, and bang in front of me is a box. There wouldn't be no need for that box if there were a system that enabled me to start with the guns I wanted to use. So it's, it's just little things like that, little inconsistencies that baffle me about this game. And it must be because it's a, it's a multiplayer game. Battlefield is a multiplayer game. They're making an emphasis on story on single player for the console. I would like to think. I think it's for the benefit of the console. Because the early Battlefields, I don't think they even had campaigns. I think they were just multiplayer. So, they're trying to appeal to a, a broader market. I just think that the there's a couple of edges that need to be smoothened for them to, to really have a product that appeals to a single-player gamer. Uh, a lot of people don't think single-player gamers exist, but they do, folks. You know, A lot of different type of gamers exist. But this is another long mission, and there's also a tank section in this one. So if you've been looking forward to driving around in a bit of a tank, you're going to get to be able to do that. I'm not going to use the tank for very long, because I don't get back in it on the second part. Instead, I do it on foot, which is kind of foolish at times, but, you know, it's it's fun. It's all about having a, an interesting time. The tank here is fantastic cover, too. You want to be really careful, though, on this sequence, because the spawns are, are very shitty. And I learnt this when I was trying to exploit this level for score. Because do you see the bridge that's directly in front of me there? It's like an overpass walkway. If you go up there to the right, there's a spawn point. And I went up there and I spawn killed three guys in a row. And I'm like, this is awesome. They're just going to keep on popping up and I'm going to get a nice combo. And then they stopped spawning. And then a bunch of guys spawned at the floor behind me. So I turned around and started shooting them. And as I started engaging them, three guys spawned on my right. Like, there's going to be a moment here where I get spawned on. If you watch, I kill him. You see it? <laughs> Shotgun guys, no less. <laughs> In a game that's challenging, that could have been the end of me. And, it, you know, I had, like, 20 life just then, so it was very close to a quick death. But the game is so lenient that that never happens. And I, I really do like this, this M4. I didn't think I would, because... The Iron Sight is not necessarily one that I'm a big fan of. I don't like any kind of Iron Sight that, that restricts the... Oh, fucking fireworks already, man. It's it's half past five. This shit shouldn't start until, like, eight. Sad cunts just waiting around, exploding things. Which someone is undoubtedly going to be a comment. Well, you're sat in your room talking to yourselves. Well, I think you're the sad one. Well, you know, I'm making money, so fuck them. They're burning it, literally. But keep on pushing forward. This vision mode that tags people is so powerful, I can't stress how much you need to be using it, because it just makes so much more sense. Just keep on hitting them, keep on taking them out. And There are times when the aiming on this game feels really good, when the, the shots are registering and people are dying, and then there are times when I just think, why the fuck am I even shooting them when I can run up to him and club him with the gun and do more? But <laughs> it's just so... So strange. But in the previous video, I was talking about difficulty, conventional difficulty in games, and if it's obsolete, if it needs to change. Um, and we'll, I was looking at why games are getting easier, which I think we can all agree the easiest way to answer this, which doesn't really give much room for debate, is they're looking for a wider audience, wider audience brings more money, more money, more better. 
you know, very concise argument, and it's probably true, but I, I want to look at it a little differently than that, a little bit more colourful in our approach. Harder difficulties are something that a game can use to get buzz, to get a reputation, to get an allure. To get an allure in this culture of simple and unchallenging games. Just then, this actually looked like a harder difficulty. Did you see that? I was getting really tagged. But why isn't all the game like that? Why am I not being hit now? And you might be thinking, well, Chris, they're shooting at your team. Maybe it's got better AI. Maybe it's finally acknowledging the team. To which I would swiftly say, no. <laughs> they do not shoot your team. Let me tell you that much. You know, they might not kill you that quickly, but <laughs> if you think that your team's going to be a great scapegoat for you to do some flanking, you're going to learn the difference. And I have a great video coming up called Them Video Games, where I sneak behind a guy with a rocket launcher, and as I'm about to go and stab him, he knows I'm there, and there's no reason for him to know I'm there. And he does this amazing thing where he goes to, into an aiming posture and somehow shoots behind me, <laughs> and just shoots behind himself, sorry, and kills me. It's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I was in tears, and uh, hopefully that video will get some, some enjoyment, because it made me laugh. But... Difficulty can sell games, and a great example of this is Dark Souls. Dark Souls is a game that, if you take any of the things that Dark Souls prides itself on having, and you put them in any other environment, that game would be berated for doing it. It would be hated for doing it. But because it's Dark Souls, you accept it. You know, you get on with it. It's Dark Souls. It's what it does. You know, this game is not bad in this way. This game is not unfair in this way. This game is not cruel in this way. It's just Dark Souls. It's like praising Hitler for his painting, while at the same time completely conveniently forgetting the whole killing people he did not deem worthy of his superior race. You know, it's it's weird. It's a weird perspective. It's almost bizarre to me because I, I've said this in the very first video that I ever addressed Dark Souls with before I'd ever played it or before I was going to play it. I said I was having the interest of playing the game in spite of my better judgement and I'm glad I had the interest because I played it and I fell in love. It's a great game. But everything I said in that video is true. Even having played it, even having having, having like four times in one sentence <laughs> such an adoration for that series the things that I criticise and I said are valid. The things in that game, in any other context, in any other game, would be the reason that it got a bad review, would be the reason why people mocked it, would be the reason why patches exist. You can't have those features in, in, in modern games, or we think you can't, even though Dark Souls proved it wrong. And what you're seeing now is you're seeing how Dark Souls is affecting the, the rest of the industry. Not in a big, profound way like Modern Warfare's do and Call of Duty's where everybody's like, oh, we've got to get the quick book. We've got to dumb our game down and have progression in multiplayer and prestige and all this other stuff so we can get millions of kids spending millions of hours. I read a statistic the other day saying there have been more hours logged playing Call of Duty online than the human race has existed since the beginning of our species. Which is just baffling and profound but true and sad but not not sad in like a bad way just sad in a way like just imagine what could be achieved in the time invested in that it makes me think that we I don't know we'd learn how to fly and cure every disease and create time travel and shit but I don't know so strange that when you look at it as a statistic like that, I look at some of my save files and I get a little bit sad thinking that's how much of my life is invested in, in this this disc, this disc that I gave to my, I would give to my grandma and she would look at it as if I'd just shit in her hand. <laughs> but to me that means so much more because it's a universe, it's a world that I've been in and I've experienced and I've, I've had a great time. You know, the only thing you can compare that to to somebody of an older generation is a book, you know. There are people nowadays that'll say th ridiculous statements like, why would you ever read a book for when you've got a TV? 
How would those words ever form a sentence and be uttered from anyone's mouth? Like, I just... I can't even talk about that, man. My brain just doesn't work. Anybody who has that mentality, to me, is just broken. <laughs> Fundamentally broken in the brain. But people do. And it might not even be their fault. But that's beyond the point. That's a completely different issue. But a book enables you to picture worlds, characters, events in your head, sculpted by your imagination, you know, guided by the words that the author's using... But essentially, you are living that adventure. You are that adventure. You're, it's different. It's a personal adventure, and it's different for everybody. And that's what a game is. But a game is is that on so much more, so much of a more profound level. Even though I would arguably say that literature is probably more important than than games, but I still love games a lot. Uh, something's going to happen here as well, guys. If this is the bit I think. It might, have, it might have already happened, I'm not too sure. No, it's about to happen. So, I come out of here, I kill a tank in front of me, this guy here. But you'll notice I'm on a really low life and he kills me. You'll see him hit me and it says crippled tank. So it means I can't move. That's me being crippled. I kill his tank and I should get out now or my tank's going to die. But I didn't and it blew up. And what happened is, uh, it loaded me in the checkpoint facing the wrong way. And because this is my first playthrough, I was like, where the fuck am I going? So I go down here thinking this is the right way. And you'll notice on the map and on the screen, there's no indicator of where it wants me to go. There's no heads up icon. There's no waypoint. There's none of that stuff. So I end up backtracking a little bit here, which is not what you want to do. You want to turn around and you want to go back through that multi-story car park and continue onwards. But I didn't do that. So uh, my apologies, but something different for a change, I guess. You get to see me wander around and wonder where the F I am. And that's a parked tank, that, but I'm still trying to kill it because I'm angry. <laughs> the difficulty can sell games. There's another firework. But it's a very specific audience that you're targeting then, and it's a much smaller audience than, you know, here's a game with tits and explosions, buy it! Which I think we can all agree we would. Because it's... <laughs> especially if you're a man, men are easy to sell to. Every time I go to websites and there's those things on the side like hot Russian ladies are totally wanting some deep digging action from you and then it does that hilarious thing where it tracks your, your server or your proxy it's like you live in so and so that I'm from so and so too we should totally meet up in enter random local town it's like fuck off you stupid spammy computer bot person like I got I got called a homo last night by a computer <laughs> it was hilarious I, I, can't, I was on a, a torrent site looking at I can't remember what I was looking at. I think I was looking at some ebooks. Because. What was I looking for? It's a very old book. And I can't remember the name right now because I'm choking on it. And I've searched all over for it to, to buy it in legitimate means. So my next logical step is to try and look for it digitally. And I was looking, I was searching for it. I didn't get anything in the search. But as I was doing it, at the side of the page, there was. Um, one of those advertisements, and I, I always do this every so often, just to see where it takes you, and it always takes you to the same kind of shitty fucking super spammy type website that gets you filled with adware. But I clicked on the, the picture. It was some ridiculous, you know, like, this Russian loves any normal white man. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> okay, click that, wants you now. And when you click on one of these sites, it always comes up the same thing. It'll take you to some random, you know, here's a bunch of images we stole from Google where the tits are strained so much against the tops you can see every bit of flesh you could conceivably want. And every time you click on anything, it doesn't take you to a nice gallery where you can gawp like the pervert you are. It takes you to another site with another million worth of links and adware and bad stuff and bullshit. Because that's what they do. It's just crap. But what it did was, I, I clicked on it, I'm like, oh, it's one of these. It's not even going to take me to a proper legitimate site. So, you know, kind of fuck this kind of scenario. Oh, little strategy here, guys. If you press a button to my left, uh, it'll open, it'll lower those spike things so you can drive a tank out of this room to the next section of the level. But you're not going to see me do that, I don't think, because I'm an idiot. This is my first playthrough, so all I'm doing is, is just responding. But instead of, you know, clicking to another site, because I know exactly what kind of site this was, I was about to quit when one of those bar came up at the b bottom where you're like, oh, yeah, some random person wants to talk to you. So it came up, you know, I'm from so-and-so too, and I'm super horny, we should fuck, or something like that. I'm like, okay, yeah, that's fantastic, see you later. And before I'd even had a chance to click off in a few seconds, 
the, the, the damn robot person went, you're so mean, why aren't you talking to me? You're such a homo. I'm like, what the fuck? And at that moment in time, my pride almost had me replying to this fake person calling me a homo on this stupid bullshit advertisement that takes you to, you know, fucking RussianSingles.com or whatever it is. But it's so stupid that this kind of stuff exists and it always makes me think of the person that doesn't realise that that's not a human. And that also indirectly makes me think of these old people that get those, those, those letters where it's like, you have won a holiday, you've won a million pounds. All you have to do is call 09090909 and spend 70 grand phoning up and claiming your free key ring. Where they, they send off to these, these scams thinking they've won and they spend all this money on phones and on things you know just to try and claim this prize that always turns out to be a keyring that they didn't want and it's it's just all a scam because that's what they are and it makes me think of those kind of gullible unfortunate people that are too nice for their own good because you know they're chasing fucking pot of golds at the end of rainbows but the end of this rainbow is really a crack den where you're about to get gang raped by a bunch of you know irish mobsters but that's the end of the first part of Singapore, guys. Thank you for watching, and you take care now.